Hello, wonderful writing and reading people. Have you ever stopped to think what you should do when your muse decides to go on holiday without you? If you're keen on finding out and a couple of tips on how to get it to come back, then stay tuned. Hi there everyone, my name is Lisa Oliver. I am an MM Paranormal Romance author and I am self-published. I have over 80 titles uh, that I've written in the last eight years and I um, support myself entirely from the money that I make from Amazon KDP. So, with 80 titles, I think it's fair to say that there are times when I run out of ideas. It's not that I run out of books that I need to write because my to-write list is huge. It's one of the joys of writing a number of series all at the same time. However, there are times when the muse just wants to run amok. It wants to go and do something else. <laughs> it's the middle of winter here in New Zealand. Well, it's at least the beginning of winter here in New Zealand. So we have, you know, chilly temperatures, teeming rain. I'm quite lucky where I live. I don't get snow um, like so many of my readers and author friends do. However, it's not very pleasant. And clearly, my muse took, you know, took offence at it and is probably sunning themselves somewhere sunny, um, probably anywhere in the Northern Hemisphere, because it's certainly not sunny down here. For an, an author relies on the muse, I'm sure we all agree. We might call it by a different name, but the muse is our creative soul. It's where our ideas come from, it's how um, our creativity tunes into the universe and we actually create the stories that we write. Um, as many of you know, if you've been watching my channel for some time, I don't plan any of my stories. I just sit down and write them. And the muse is hellishly important um, when that happens because I've got no idea where my stories go. Uh, the ones, the uh, two that I happen to have started at the moment, um, yeah. I don't know where they're going to go. I'm just going to keep writing and you'll probably find out about the same time as I do. But the thing is, is that there are times when you get stuck and you just think, oh, you can't think what to write. You can't think how to write. You can't think. It's like your writing brain just has gone on holiday. Um, if you are stuck for ideas, um, definitely check out my video up here on what to do if you haven't got any ideas. Um, it's annoying. Well, I'll still write that down. It's annoying, but it's usually a sign that you need to try new things. Um, I wrote a blog post earlier um, in the week when I was just talking with my readers about the fact that I hate to disappoint them. So um, you know, as I say, I write Fated Mate stories. I love the Fated Mate genre. I really do. But every now and again, I get this urge to write something else. And one of those instances, in fact, the first time I wrote something else was the book that I've just released, The Infidelity Clause. No Fated Mates, no Furry Shifters, um, definitely a spot of magic, not set in this world, set in an alternative world. Um, and I thought long and hard about whether or not I should even release that because my readers have come to expect a certain level of, um, I suppose there's some normalcy. It's like you know what you're getting when you read a Lisa Oliver book. And I've worked very hard for eight years to have that happen. But there comes a time when you have to try something else. And that's what you do when your muse goes on holiday. Now, one of the first things, and the first tip I would suggest, is you do a collaboration. I have done a couple over the years, um, usually with newer authors, and I've had a lot of fun doing them, but it's never really been more than one book. Then J.P. Sale came along. She, came and, um, she messaged me just before Christmas. I have enjoyed her work in the past, and she said, hey, I'm working on my schedule for next year, and how do you feel about doing a collab? <laughs> I thought it was going to be one book. Maybe three. You know. No, 
JP, the wonderful JP Sale, is a force of nature. She genuinely is, and she has such amazing ideas and such unusual ideas that I find myself kind of, you know, following along because I want to see what's going to happen next. So anyway, at the moment, um, at the moment we're into it with two series. There's meant to be one series that was the Tangled Tentacles. Uh, book three for that will be coming out. I think it's next week. Uh, yeah, the twenty second of June is for Todd ta from Tangled Tentacles, which is book three. So we've done three books so far. Well, no, we've actually done four because the book that's due to come out on the twenty second of July is going to the editors next week. We finish that one, and that's not Tentacles. No, it's something else, totally different again. Still MM. We still love our men, but it's not tentacles, it's something else. So you can wait and find out what that is. I'm, we're going to do a, a big cover reveal on the 1st of July. Anyway, so collaborating with somebody else does help you move out of your comfort zone. Um, I was talking to JP Sale about this just the other day, and I had said about how... I wrote with certain expectations within certain rules. You know, I had certain worlds. I had certain rules that my characters followed and things like that. And working with, J um, with JP has really helped me, has encouraged me to think outside of those squares and then think outside of those boxes and try something different. Um, it's not always been comfortable. There have been times when I've actually been very uncomfortable about the things that I'm writing. But the depth and complexity of the characters um, that I've produced working in, co in a collaboration is not something I'm going to do, you know, I'm not going to, um, you know, push them away. I am really pleased with what we've achieved so far and, and we've still got more books to do. So, <laughs> so you can expect to be seeing more from us, at least for this year, if, 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 unless we get another idea. But anyway... So that's something, that's one way of trying something new, is if you collaborate with somebody else. Um, because when you're collaborating with another author, you're both bringing new things to the table and being able to spark ideas off of each other is a really um, productive way of spending your time. It certainly is. We can, you know, we started off planning a book when we first got together. Um, in that one first meeting, we'd planned a series. And as I say, now we're at two series and we've done four books, I think it is, in as many months. So, yeah, collaborations, healthy collaborations are a really good idea to uh, give your muse a holiday without them actually going anywhere. Trying new things is, is the key. Because for the muse, being a holiday isn't, you know, being on holiday isn't sitting on the beach in a sun hat, you know, sipping pina coladas, although that would be rather nice. It's about trying new things. And quite often as authors, um, particularly when you're self-published, you, you have this thing whereby you might not be confident enough to try new ideas. You're going to want to stick to the tried and true because you know it works and because you know your readers enjoy it. But if you try something new, you might surprise yourself. You would definitely surprise your readers, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. I think so long as you have, um, like my books are only mid-level angst, if that. You know, there are certain degrees of violence, but not a lot. There's definitely degrees of intimacy because that's what my books are about. You know, they're about couples, they're about relationships, they're about menages and things like that. But if you can break out of your mold a bit, try something different, the worst that's going to happen is that it's not going to sell your readers and all your readers are going to buy it and they're not going to like it. But if you've built up a steady enough relationship with them over the years and with your backlist, you can afford to have a dump, you know, a, 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 I was going to say a dump, it's not a dump, it's something that's not as successful. I have books that haven't sold as well as others. I have a, an entire series that didn't sell as well as others. 
um, I still finished it because that's you know that's what I do. I couldn't have I couldn't leave it where it was, but yeah, not everything does wonderfully all the time. So when your muse decides it wants a holiday, or decides it's just gone and taken one, think about how you can inject something new into what you do, uh, whether it's another series, um, a different type of character, uh, a different um, plot, you know, plot situations. The plot situations are a little bit difficult if your books are character centric, like mine are. But you could still introduce different types of characters. And uh, there's definitely a diverse world out there, so it's not a difficult thing to do. The big thing, I suppose, whether your muse takes a holiday without you or whether it's begging you to go on holiday and do something else, you've got to keep writing, or if you stick to writing, the books you want to read. And accept that over time, our reading preferences change. Then there's nothing wrong with your writing preferences doing the same thing. I know I will always write MN. I adore the genre. I've been a gay ally for well over 40 years. And I love the complexity and the depth that can come from men loving men. But it doesn't mean to say that maybe I wouldn't like to try historical men or magical, I've done magical, but historical. Or maybe different power plays, different dynamics. There's still so much to try. And if your muse is feeling the same way, then why don't you take a Sunday afternoon or something and just like dump some ideas on the paper and see what your muse might come up with. You could be pleasantly surprised and what's better, you could both, you and your muse, could find a new lease of life and a new injection of excitement. I'm sorry this is only a short one today. It is actually quite late at night. And in case you've watched my other videos this week and thought, my God, does this woman not own another T-shirt? She does. However, I try and do all my weekly's work, week's worth of videos in the one night and then schedule them through the week because primarily my occupation is a self-published author. So I still have books that need writing. Doing this, talking to you guys on YouTube, um, sharing just a few tips and advice. Sometimes it might sound a bit weird. Sometimes you might think to yourself, well, can't you be a bit more professional? Well, no, this is me. This is what I do. My ultimate goal is to help you or help new authors, and I'm hoping one of them is you, to be able to live the lifestyle I do. To be able to work from home at your own pace, doing your own thing, and most importantly, doing something that you love. Because when you love what you do, that excitement and that passion for it shows on the page. I have had a number of comments. I was really worried when I promoted the, um, when I put the infidelity clause out, because there wasn't shifters in it, and it wasn't fated mates. And in fact, the two men didn't even know each other, and there was none of the sniffing in mine. It was two men in the marriage contract because I happen to love reading the marriage contract genre. So I wrote one of my own. And there have been a couple of reviews. I have peeked at them. I don't normally, but I did have a peek because I was really worried about this one. And people have, some, of the, some of the people have, um, in the reviews for it have said that it's the best book I've written. So sometimes... No, I'm going to say this instead. We grow as authors. My first book, although the story and the characters were well-rounded and the story and the plot were good, I never got it edited. I hadn't found my style. I hadn't found my pace. I see such clear differences between the way I wrote in my first book to the way I wrote in my 10th book to the way I wrote in my 20th book. 
30th, 40th, 50th, 60th, 70th and 80th book. I like to think I grow and develop for the better with every single book I put out. And so when your muse decides to take a holiday, why don't you go on one with it and write about it? Because that's what we do as authors. We grow, we evolve, and we craft stories that our wonderful readers really enjoy. And that's what I want for you. That's what I want for me. <laughs> anyway, my dear friend, um, if you did find this content useful, um, please, or even if you just empathise with it in some way, please do hit the like and subscribe button. I have a number of videos on this channel uh, which concerns the process of uh, writing, plotting, panting, marketing, self-publishing, uh, how do you find ideas, what do you do if you've got too many ideas, what do you do if you don't have enough time to write, um, all those sorts of things is what I cover on this channel. If you're interested in seeing me write and actually writing with me, then you want to hop over to my Lisa Writes channel, and the, con the link for that is in the description below as well. But uh, happy Bride Month. Please hit like and subscribe. And to all of you out there, please hug the ones you love. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.